Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Uh, crazy action. We'll get into that uh, in a second. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, uh, thank you very much for uh, spending uh, your time with us, uh, listening to unbiased opinion of what we believe or what I believe uh, is going to happen in the market uh, while taking a very mature and responsible take and being fiscally assured that uh, you are looking at the market the right way. So if you are brand new, guys, please like, subscribe, uh, and share the channel. And thank you very much uh, for all your support. So let's talk about it. Usually this is a phrase, um, you know, there's a phrase that, that goes along with um, small caps, right? For all you guys who, who do dabble in the small cap market, there's something called the parabolic move. Remember, like the parabolic uh, the best way to describe it, and the, the most recent stock that went like parabolic, if you guys remember, was that TOP that literally went from like six dollars to two sixty. That's where you use the word parabolic. Uh, it's very rare that you turn around and go, "Wow, the Qs went parabolic," but that's exactly what happened. Uh, this has been an absolute screaming, screaming of a run uh, by the bull stampede. Um, you know, technology names have been absolutely on fire. If you look at uh, the scoreboard, the Dow only went up about four tenths of a percent versus a three percent move on the Nasdaq, and that's after uh, giving back a little bit on Friday. It, incredible, incredible uh, moves in many, many stocks. Everything basically broke out this week. Everything uh, went parabolic in the last uh, you know week, week and a half or so, and you can just see it on the charts one by one. Uh, you had Amazon going nuts. Uh, Nvidia was definitely the biggest one. Just went out of its mind. Uh, Google went, I mean, look at Google. I mean, look, and we'll get the individual setups, I think, for, for next week, what I think um, might happen. You had, a, you had one day of a 10% run on Netflix. And again, there's really no news that is validating this move. You could turn around and say, well, you know, there is, you know, there is this whole discussion on the debt ceiling. Guys, again, if you're watching, if you're trading brand new in your first two, three, four years, I'm doing this 24 years, going on my 25th year next year, okay? They've been talking about the the debt ceiling for you know since since my my mother-in-law uh, learned how to ride her first dinosaur. This has been going on forever. They still have not uh, put a situation that that the government has been closed with three four days. It's going to get done, right? The deal is going to get done. They're going to raise the limit again. Uh, listen, is it anything's possible? Of course, you know you know this could be that one time they don't do it in the market. You know the market comes in, but the, but the point is traditionally, right? If you go back to history again, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not in the guessing game. I'm not here to be right. But traditionally, they've been raised the debt ceiling. We had a little pregnant clause on Friday uh, with negotiations, but it's going to get done. I, I think uh, the way traditionally the history has been played out, it's going to get done. So you can, it's very tough to turn around and say, well, this is just a big run up. It's just all excuses. We don't know why this is a big run-up. We don't care why this is a big run-up. We just like it, right? We like it. Every stock is breaking out. Even the stocks that are playing catch-up, they finally broke out. Uh, Meta, Apple, we've been talking about uh, all week. The semiconductor names has been going out of their minds. Uh, even Tesla, right? Even Tesla finally woke up and reclaimed the 50-day moving average on Friday. Again, we'll get to uh, the pivots in a second. But I, you know, I remember uh, last year, right, when the Nasdaq was down 30%. The Qs were down 31%. In 85% of the year, we were standing below the 50-day moving average. Traders were saying, well, I'm going to be in cash. I'm going to be in cash. Okay, you're in cash. You missed some great downside action. But okay, cool. You're in cash to each, to each his own. I'm not, not judging. And now the same traders that the this is market is absolutely running, they'll say, well, uh, the market's only being uh, pushed up because of uh, five stocks. Listen, at, at some point you have to commit to either trade or not trade. Okay, you can't. You know, there's, there's a lot of very famous uh, analysts. John Madden is probably the most famous one. But you're not going to get paid. Uh, you're not going to develop your career by sitting on the sidelines and trying to wait for that the, the perfect pitch. You're never going to get the perfect pitch. It's like somebody uh, looking at real estate and say, "Well, the interest rates are too high." Ah, uh, well, you know what? Now the interest rates are being cut. I'm going to wait for lower interest rates. It's never a perfect time to buy your dream home. Your dream home is your dream home. Just buy it and enjoy it and, and create memories. And the stock market is exactly the same way. You're, you're never going to have that perfect setup with 200,000 shares on the offer that are going to lift 
and then the stock's going to go up $7. Maybe that happens once in a blue moon, maybe it doesn't, but there is no perfect scenario in the market. The market's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. It's supposed to make you uh, second guess everything. That's the whole point. This is why so many people uh, have so much struggles in the stock market. And over time, slowly but surely that goes away. But at some point you have to kind of, you know, decide what your you know, level of participation is in the stock market. And right now we are on a, an absolute fantastic run, absolutely fantastic run. Do I believe uh, the market's a little ahead of itself? Absolutely. If I started, if you guys remember, I started on the Wednesday video, started talking about, I want to leave all the really high flyers alone, right? Like in the videos of the world, the Googles, the Amazons the world, because they already had their runs. I was more concentrating on Apple. If you guys remember Apple and Tesla, and Meta stocks are coming off the bottom of the channels. And those are the stocks that broke out and continued to run while uh, the names like NVIDIA a little bit got gassed out. And there is a situation that I can see in front of me that there is an exhaustion cycle developing. Now, all an exhaustion cycle is, is uh, let, let's, let's look, for example, at Google, for example, right? So all an exhaustion cycle is, is after a big, big run up, the stock is just tired, okay? The same way they continue to sell the stock. Like here, here's an example here in February, right? So February, they had this big, big run, right? It just got tired, okay? So it came in for the next two weeks, and then the sellers finally exhausted themselves and the stock went back higher. It works exactly the same way, the opposite way, when the market has a big, big run. So if you look at Google, for example, Google in the last two weeks has gone from 104 to 126. That's a pretty damn big move, right? Put in this inverted hammer, which basically is telling you it's tired. It's not the top of Google. It's not this is it, the 2023 highs. It just means for a cycle, right? Whether that cycle is one hour, one day, or a week, we don't know. But it just shows you there is a lack of commitment at these levels. That's it. And the stock organically needs a comfortable level to back test a little bit, just to kind of at least test the five-day moving average, as you can see here off, off this orange line, and create a new base. That's all it is. And I think a lot of stocks uh, going into this week are, are facing a lot of the same characteristics. Google, definitely uh, one of my favorites uh, going into this week for a potential uh, back test. You have NVIDIA, right? Uh, NVIDIA had a really, really big run. There was a you know nice little pivot. We had Friday to the downside. We'll get to the pivots in a second. But I'm looking for stocks. And again, it doesn't mean it's every stock, but I'm looking for stocks that kind of like, oh, I need a break, right? I need a break. I need a, I need a couple of days to kind of, you know, just, just get my win back just to relax a little bit to kind of maybe set up for the next move up. And I think it's just healthy. Um, the, the last thing you want is the biggest perma bulls, right? To come out and go, yeah, I can't be chasing stocks up here. And that's the last thing which you want to do. And when you get a parabolic move uh, like we saw, you know, like we saw uh, Wednesday into Thursday session on the queues. I mean, just, just from Wednesday, ch check this out, guys. Just from Wednesday, we went from 327 the 338, $10 for just in a 12 hour cycle. That's a pretty damn big statement. And again, this is one of those scenarios we want to watch going into next week, that if they are tired, we are prepared uh, for the bottom of the range so we can take advantage on the downside potential back test move. So here's the levels I'm watching for uh, next week. Guys, on the queues, watch this uh, 335 level, right? That's Friday's lows, okay? Um, so if we can start building below 335, which is Friday's lows, I think there's a shot we back test into the five day. And what's cool about the five day is if you want to establish a new long position, that's the area you want to bounce the market. Because if you look at the cues, every single time they hit this orange line, which is the five day, what happened, right? They bounced, they bounced, they bounced, they bounced, they bounced, they bounced. So if we can get a 335, a scenario we could play both ways. So if we could get a 335 breakdown in the cues, then we could you know, possibly get a move down to this 331, 332 area and then you can cover your short if you are that aggressive and maybe switch bias back to the long side. It's just such a scenario that I want to play out. Same thing with Google, you know, same thing with a name like Google, for example, right? Just to, if, you know, if one goes, they're all going to go. I, I definitely want to watch the bottom of the range of Google. Uh, again, if you are brand new to technical analysis, uh, inverted hammer is, is I don't want to use the word bearish, but it's, it's a short-term sell signal. So if you see, you know, if you see like there was an inverted hammer here, the next couple of days started rolling over. Uh, let's see here, there's an inverted hammer here. The next day we went down, there was an inverted hammer here. The next day we went down. So it doesn't mean we're going to go down for three weeks. It just means that uh, a sell, sell, uh, sell signal has been, uh, has been um, uh, put into play uh, and you can take advantage. Maybe it lasts for one day, maybe it lasts for one hour, maybe it lasts for one day or one week, one month, we don't know. Uh, but at least we are prepared uh, for that channel. So if Google uh, starts confirming down the bottom of the range, sure, maybe it could, it could mirror the cues 
and go down to the five day as well. Uh, same thing with the video, right? Same thing, the video, we had a nice little pivot on Friday on the video. I'm watching the bottom channel in the video as well. If this starts losing the bottom channel, here's the five day moving average as well. So that's the short side, right? That's the short argument because again, we always want to be prepared on both sides. There's still a lot of really good looking setups to the upside. I mean, stocks that are still uh, coming off the bottom of the range that didn't fully participate in the rally or they're just still relaxing. Like, let me give you an example, right? Look at Uber. Uber's a really, look, I mean, great looking move, right? Uber had a phenomenal move. Talk about a massive, massive move. And like what we just discussed a couple of a couple of minutes ago about a stock just gets tired, right? Uber got tired. It, it just think about it. It ran from 29, right? 29 to 39 in two weeks. And here it just got tired. So what happened in the next couple of days, kind of the thesis that I have for a couple of these names going into Monday, it got tired and it gave a sell signal and started coming into three, four days. Now it rebounded, right? Reclaimed the five day moving average. And now it's just kind of basing here on the top of the range here. If this week, if it starts basing, finally breaks above uh, this channel here on uh, May 18th, then you can start its next leg up. So that's the whole point, right? Big run, got tired, came in, right? Now reclaimed and now it's ready to go higher again. Look at Shopify, right? Shopify had a really nice quarter. Again, another example of a big, big run, right? Inverted hammer. Remember we just saw an inver inver inverted hammer? It's a sell signal, right? So what happened? The stock started coming down. Two, three, four, maybe even a week now, okay? The point is the inverted hammer is going to give you a really good, um, a really good sense of what's about to happen next, despite of what you think is gonna happen next. And that's a very, very important point to kind of put the pieces to the puzzle. And now the key is, can Shopify get back above and reclaim the 10-day moving average this week? I want to watch it. Uh, there is definitely some short-term uh, call buyers came in for the 62s, the 63s, the 65s, the 66. Who knows? Something's up. Maybe nothing. But the point is, I, I definitely want to watch the top of the range this week. If it starts reclaiming, uh, it can start waking up. Uh, Apple, right? Apple broke out this week. Uh, obviously, any dips, uh, we definitely want to keep an eye on. Uh, Meta broke out this week. Again, look for any dips we want to look out for. Uh, look at you know, look at a name for example like Tesla, right? Obviously, uh, you know Tesla is my favorite stock. Uh, this week, it did what it had to do. Took out two big levels here. We traded both those levels this week. This 170 went into the 174s, and then Friday got above this channel here. Most important, reclaimed the 50-day moving average, and this is the highest close in this whole formation. The key is if Tesla can just get above this whole channel here for this week, right? There's a whole gap here to around the 190 area. And speaking of option flow, they were coming in for the 190, excuse me, they were coming in for the 200s, the 205s, I even saw some 215s uh, for the next couple of weeks out of expiration. So if the market continues or they're just a rotation from, from stocks that are coming off the top to coming off the bottom, a name like Tesla, if it can, confirms Friday's channel can really start stretching, uh, especially the option flow, institutional money flow uh, continues to move. Uh, other than that, it's a very stock specific market. Uh, a lot of names are breaking out. Again, the name we talked about a couple of days ago, uh, ACVA, I started buying this thing a couple of days ago. Nice looking chart. It's not sexy. Uh, there's nothing, you know, mass appeal about it, but these charts are just working. It's just big moves, consolidates, you know, reclaims, goes again. And these names, uh, have been working. Uh, obviously, uh, you have to start looking at charts that are coming off the bottom instead of coming off the top. That's a safety issue. Kind of what we talk about all the top, not jumping off the 10th floor, uh, jumping off the first floor in case you're wrong. You got a, you know, you got a skin knee instead of a severed head. So that definitely applies to this type of market. So if you're looking at the cues again, uh, 305, uh, 335, definitely keep an eye on uh, this week. Uh, for a potential reversal back down. Names like NVIDIA, Google, and I'm sure there's so many other names that had big, big runs, but I'm just trying to concentrate on one or two. We, you don't need 10 if you have one or two uh, that could provide the same amount of uh, value. If you look at all the other indexes, uh, SPIs uh, broke, out, uh, broke out this week again. Uh, you have the diamonds uh, representing Dow Jones Industrial Average is playing a little bit of catch up. Again, it's 30 stocks versus 100 in the NASDAQ and 500 in the S&P. Uh, that, you know, the diamonds, you know, the diamonds you need to get above, you know, this 337 level, right? 337 level to, to really wake up. Uh, the IWM, uh, again, has been uh, it definitely been the redheaded step, stepchild in this whole rally. It has basically not participated because it's still stuck in this whole massive supply zone. Uh, for me to get interested on another broad cap, you know, uh, market rally, uh, they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to reclaim, you know, they're going to have to reclaim 
at least, at least, you know, one, 181 in the close if you're trading the IWM to wake up. So look, I think there's definitely some good two-sided opportunity this week. Uh, I'm definitely watching uh, for any type of clues for a reversal, all both in the NASDAQ, uh, NVIDIA, Amazon, you know, you can spread it out through anything else if you want anything that, that had a high flying uh, appeal this week. And the key is always, guys, always be prepared on both sides of the market. We have a thesis, we have a bias going into the day based on research. But if that bias switch uh, quickly changes based on price action, you can't be a stubborn mule trying to recreate a wheel that doesn't want to be recreated. It's very, very important to understand that our opinions are cool, but price action is more important. Guys, have a blessed, blessed weekend. Stay healthy. Have a smile on your face. You only get one shot of this life. May might as well make the most of it. God bless everybody. I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.